that never sleeps. It's Where's Elvis This Week. Our guests tonight are journalist Christopher Hitchens, cosmopolitan editor Helen Gurley Brown, comedian Tony Hawks, and actor comedian Dave Chappelle. And now, please welcome your host, Mr. John Stewart. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Too kind. I must. Please. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in this Sunday night. Hello and welcome to America, land of the free, home of the breast implant. Well, well, God bless Baywatch. I am your host, John Stewart, or as I'm referred to here in America, Seinfeld Light. Nice to see you. <laughs> What's the deal? And welcome to Where's Elvis This Week. We're here in the last weeks before the presidential elections to give you some insight into American politics and culture. It's a cultural exchange, really. America made a deal with Britain. Uh, apparently, you get me, and we get Gabby Rosalind. <laughs> My people assured me it was a fair one for one. So, uh, this week in America, very exciting week. The Madonna baby watch is on. The baseball playoffs have begun. And hold on to your hats. We had a vice presidential debate, <laughs> which I couldn't decide whether to watch or to rub steel wool on my eyeballs. <laughs> And finally, once again, where's Elvis this week? Well, we can't be sure exactly, but we do know one thing. Yes, Elvis is alive. <laughs> Thanks to the people for that scoop. Nice to clear that up once and for all. Let's kick this thing into gear, shall we, ladies and gentlemen? Let's go to the show. Hello. 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 Joining me tonight, from Britain, English-born but Washington-based uh, journalist, author, and contributing editor of Vanity Fair, Christopher Hitchens, and comedian and songwriter, Tony Hawks, from Britain. Uh, and the American team, from America, author and editor-in-chief of Cosmopolitan, Helen Gurley-Brown, and fresh from his role in The Nutty Professor, comedian Dave Chappelle. The American team. Uh, there'll be no fighting on the American side. Uh, <laughs> can I ask you a question? Cosmopolitan, I heard it was the anniversary, 110 years of Cosmopolitan. Is that, the, is that true? 1883, so whatever 1883 is from 1996, that's it. And if anybody can figure that out. Do you worry that that's like giving men the playbook for women? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, if I buy it and I read it and I go, oh, that's how she'll know I'm cheating on her. <laughs> I'm much more crass than that. If your sex puts down as 295 to go buy a copy, mm -hmm. I don't care what kind of damage is done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So it's a financial but situation. But a, a lot of men do read Cosmo. It's very valuable. The pictures. The pictures? <laughs> I think you're thinking of a different magazine, my friend. <laughs> oh. Uh, if I remember correctly. Well, well let's uh, get started here with the headlines. We'll start with some quick headlines from both sides of the Atlantic. Helen, uh, this one was the one uh, bit of major British news that Americans uh, caught in the papers this week. Hot to trot die caught horsing around on video. Poor Di. She's taken a great deal. And Your sympathy is with her, then? Well, why wouldn't it be? They made the whole thing up. Uh, they couldn't be that hard up for something to write about or photograph or film. I mean, that's really gruesome. To, and everybody says, oh, well, it wasn't she after all, but it sold a million extra newspapers exactly. for the sun. Where yeah. do we draw the line? For instance, a video of me, perhaps in leather chaps with the butt cut out, came out. I think <laughs> I think I would find that disturbing John, as well. John, if that's Not that that video exists. I just think if that's really... If that's really you, and somebody got the camera located strategically right. and got the film, okay, that was, mm -hmm. the, re that was the real thing, but that wasn't well, really Die. So if it was Die, it's actresses. okay. If it was Die, no. if then it that'd was, be fine. If it was Die, it was uh, onerous and execrable, but if it wasn't Die, it should be liable. I, you British people used to allow people to sue when things right. like that. I think, I think we should refrain uh, uh, in during the show to referring to them as you British people. <laughs> I think, in general, uh, we should try and retain some sense of civility. Yes, sir. I had to notice that the Sun described it as the frisky filly with her wild stallion. You don't get that kind of writing in the New York no, Post. No, but that excited me. That yeah. sentence excited me. And then I knew, and I knew it was a fake straight away because she kept top and bottom both on, which you don't do when you're doing that. No, I Dave Chappelle, you buying this? I'd buy it if I knew where to get it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fair enough. I think we've established so far, you like pictures and video. I think that's a reasonable assumption to make. 
Let's get to the next headline, shall we? <laughs> Tony, here's a story that dominated uh, the New York papers this week. Uh, do you have any idea what this is about coming in from, uh, uh, from Britain just today? Angel in the outfield. Well, any, any thoughts? Obviously, although I'm from London, I like to keep a keen eye on big major international stories when they break, and clearly this is one of those. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's a, it's a little boy, isn't he? He's leaning over the edge there, trying to catch a... But, and what he's, he's on a... I think he's on a youth work program for the New York Yankees. <laughs> right. And uh, <laughs> what it okay. is, is, is they've got all around the crowd, they've got about 30 of these little boys that they've hired. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, he wait, and they're hoping to catch the guy out. And... So you're suggesting Steinbrenner is a Fagin-like character. <laughs> <laughs> and young street urchins are working yes. for him. Well, all right. I'm happy to slag off Steinbrenner because I have no idea who he is. Oh, really? Is he the, uh, Steinbrenner is the owner of the New York oh, Yankees. Right. He's a, uh, uh, oh, what's the word? A pompous ass. Is he? <laughs> By the way, uh, those of you unfamiliar with that story, uh, a 12-year-old boy was sitting in the right field stands at Yankee Stadium. Uh, a ball was hit that was not going to be a home run, but he reached his glove over the fence and stole it from the fielder that was playing there, and it became a home run. <laughs> Even though it wasn't a home run, and he, and the boy became the toast of the town by doing the. He's a hero, now, is he? He's a big hero. Is he? He's a huge hero, man. He's gonna have one hell of a bar mitzvah for this kid. He's <laughs> wow. He's a hero. This week, the election coverage focused on the presidential head-to-head -head debates uh, here in America. Here's a quick clip of uh, uh, Clinton and Dole trying to think of something interesting to say to the American people at the debate. Ah, yes. Uh, meanwhile, in Britain, the party conference season ended, and it looks like they've gone a bit Hollywood. But let me tell you something. No one out tackies American conventions, not on my watch. I just don't know if British people are really ready for all that. Um, I actually don't think that um, people in this country like that kind of style. Please welcome President Clinton and Senator Dole. the Democratic and Republican conventions watched them for entertainment value and thought they were a joke. Huh? A joke? Helen, defend us on this. American conventions a joke? No, they're not a joke, but they are show business, and it's hard to go back and get them to be more conservative again because people love show business. But now people didn't watch the conventions this year. They, uh, even though they were very show busy, uh, they had the lowest ratings in history. I switched over from the convention to the debate. Mm -hmm. The debate was very honorable, and I was a nervous wreck wondering what was going to happen to Dole if right. he'd do something awful, and I didn't feel that he did. It was very honorable, a little bit on the quiet side. The conventions, by contrast, are very jazzy, and I wouldn't, for one, be able to say calm them down and make them sensible again. Now, now you guys still have what's called conferences, but you don't really have the head-to-head -head debates. The head-to-head, -head, as you call it, doesn't deserve the name of a debate at all. You have a chairman, Jim Lehrer, right. the master, for those who don't know, of the soft question to powerful people. And he works for PBS, who, sir. Only, that is public he, money. And, we own him. And only, he, and only he's allowed to ask any questions. The, the mm -hmm. rules prohibit Dole from addressing Clinton or Clinton addressing Dole. Right. So why they call it a debate, I don't know. It's an extended blue suit press conference. But Half the number of people watching the debates this time as did four years ago. You see, what you oh. I mean, what, it's a game show culture now, and you've got two right. people debating, and <laughs> neither of them can win a holiday. So no one's interested in watching it, really. Yeah. Unless Your someone... suggestion is to throw in then some appliances, yeah. something that maybe make the... Uh... Someone's got to win at the end. Someone's got to say, OK, Clinton, you get the holiday. You were better. 
Yeah. But if you had outrageous <laughs> journalists <laughs> asking, <laughs> asking improper, <laughs> irreverent questions, that right. would be a little more interesting. We'd have to move a little more. Well, what question would you have asked? If you had had the opportunity to question uh, Dole or Clinton, what would you have brought up? I would, I would ask Bob Dole what he's doing to look as nice as he does because he's older and he's got a flat tummy and he looks great and mm -hmm. his face looks great. I want to know. <laughs> I want to know if he's doing face exercises or is he doing 20 laps every Right. So you're voting for the fellow with the thigh master. You don't really care what they think. I've got a question for you to ask my friend here. He's young. Right. What are we going to do to get him involved with, uh, in politics and listening and watching right. and caring? Oh, I, I watch You don't need to ask. I just did. Oh, no. That I was my next question. <laughs> I don't know. I, I care about politics, I think, more, as much as the, the no, more than the average American. Mm -hmm. You know, just, just especially this year. It's a lot at stake for, for ethnic people. Do you watch them? <laughs> all... Sir, I, I understand. Do you watch these people when they are on David Brinkley or on, if they're debating or. Well, you know, I didn't talking? watch it first, but when Doe fell, I said it might happen again. <laughs> so, so, so many people told right. me about it. I don't want to. So you watched it to see if Dole would trip once again. I think there's a problem, I think, in Britain now, because all the, the spin doctors looking after the parties in, in, in Britain... Yeah, we don't have those here. They're copying, so <laughs> they're copying the American styles. And so we, we're just rubbish at doing it. Our idea of trying to make John Major look more kind of show busy, he took his jacket off. They, honestly, they thought because he's in shirt sleeves, he's really kicking in now. So you would have suggested if he took his jacket off to have a corset or something exciting <laughs> underneath that? Anything. I mean, and then they said, well, he copied Tony Blair because he'd done it. So our, our politicians are quibbling about, you know, whether whose idea it was to take their jacket off. Well, in, in Britain, you still discuss policy at the, uh, at the conferences, and people see that on TV. We don't, we don't no. have discussions of that. Would you rather see discussions of policy at our conventions rather than show business? Yeah, I would, but, you know, it's television, and it's a very you know, television-oriented society to the point where they blame all the ills of society on the media. Right. And to a degree, they, they can be, you know, partially right. So, you know, when you get up there, you can't, you can't tell people the truth because the truth is not entertaining. It's just very disturbing. That's right. why. <laughs> yeah. But what if you told the truth in an entertaining way? For instance, on ER, you know, it's very entertaining. It's the truth, but let's say they did the convention handheld and came through everything and... <laughs> You know, Dole went down, let's say Dole's down 20 percentage points in the poll. They get the little thing. Let's see if we can bring him back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, they got to do something. It has to be appealing to watch. You know, and I think that that's why the Democrats, I think they're a little better with mm -hmm. their campaign. It's because they're nice and they're entertainers, so they have better stars that sit in the audience. <laughs> like, you know, Bob, those, like, he wants to see, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Bob Hope and all them guys. You know, they're, they're not stars. <laughs> those aren't stars from my generation. The people to be blamed are the Oscars, of course, the Oscar organizers, because they introduced the idea this year that all events should be modeled on the Special Olympics. You notice that? Sorry? The curtains part, <laughs> the hum of the hubs and spokes, and out whirls another guy. Christopher Reeve at the Democratic Convention. Oh, yeah. uh, oh I see what you're it's saying. It's the Special Olympics all the way through. And right. Around. I, I, it's the Oscars. So you're saying they're way. using sympathetic characters to sort of raise their own, let's say, Q yeah. quotient with the uh, American public. Yeah. Well, the problem in Britain as well. You have sympathy with physically it... challenged people. Yeah. I think most people do. <laughs> yeah. Although you may not be that way. <laughs> you may be the one guy going, "What's the matter? Well, Can't well, you walk?" <laughs> you, you may be that guy. Yeah. This is America. Yeah. All right, uh, uh, let, let, let's move on to our next topic uh, of discussion here, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We're done talking about the politics. Let's talk uh, uh, a little bit more personal matters. Last month saw the biggest September opening of a movie ever, The First Wives Club. It's about three independent ladies getting revenge on their men for going after younger women. So where are we at with the battle of the sexist thing in 90s America? Uh, in Britain, you've apparently all become caring, sharing new men. But what about here in America? We asked both sides for their view. Very egotistical and um, and I think it's that whole thing of America being one of the greatest places on the earth and the best country and therefore they produce the best men I, I have a feeling that British men are uh, more thoughtful and egalitarian than American men you know, I've been married for eight years, and, you know, I, I, mean, I treat my wife equally. No, I think we'd both like to have yeah. a wife, you know, yeah. have a third person in there to do all the cleaning and, <laughs> sure, you know. The woman should stay home, cook, clean, and, uh... Male chauvinist. No, no, I'm not a male chauvinist. That's the way I was brought up. My mother sat home, cooked and cleaned, my father gave her a paycheck. Most guys are going to want to help you. 
you know, we're all dogs. All men are dogs. I think there are men who are sensitive and who are caring. I think there are few and far between and perhaps live on other planets, but... Well, we come out here on a summer day and we really enjoy, don't listen, this, the relatively more scantily clad women. We yes. enjoy that. I don't think we're too caring or sensitive. I think we just care about ourselves and our personal needs. Most of my weekend is spent um, looking after my little boy and getting my wife a break. And I think the new man is a woman's creation. Wow. You're the expert. I say that Helen Gurley Brown is a recognized expert in this field. Tell us what women want so we can pretend to be that and they'll like us. I think we got the new man in this country, and now we want to give him back. We got a man who sobbed up his story. He was sobbing uncontrollably with a sad movie and uh -huh. tears streaming down his face at La Traviata, and he does a few dishes, and he doesn't ever speak above a whisper if you're trying to say something. He just turned out to be kind of not what we really thought we wanted, a little wimpy. Well, I consider myself, I think, to be a, to be a yeah. new man. John, I think I'm a new man. I do the, I do the washing, I do the ironing. You cry. I, I've got, I cry, I've got a fairly good idea. I think, uh, I think your girlfriend or wife is probably going to leave you. Well, uh, <laughs> now, Dave, uh, as a young man, you're, you're, you're out, uh, you're single. Oh, yeah. how, how do you do you do you pretend to be more sensitive for women? Do you feel like you're a new man? You're a caring man? Well, I'm young enough no. to not know what the old man was, was necessarily. Right. But I tend to agree with her. I think a man who is too sensitive gets trampled. As much as women like to say that they want sensitivity, mm -hmm. they have their limits. And sometimes a woman will test you. And Push you. I'm having problems at home. She'll, <laughs> she'll, she'll, she'll push me, you know, just just to get a reaction. Just to him go, call you crazy. Like, and that's the man. I want. So she wants you to, to establish your territory. I've been a nice guy most of my life, and as soon as I started being mean, I lost my virginity. <laughs> the new man is willing to do without any problem whatever he's willing to let you pick up a check and pay not only half but everything and we just as soon give that back that we just... now, as the only woman though it sounds like women are very demanding you're saying we wanted a new man we got it we didn't like it we gave it back we'd like a, a new newer man but still pick up the checks but in any way but don't cry but cry a little but hold me but no punch me you know what please you're driving Dave and I and everyone else insane! It's like, uh, Maybe this is an American phenomenon, though, because the women uh, in the, uh, the British side seem to feel that that sensitive, caring man not only existed in England, but is what they wanted in England. The, the new man was kind of, sort of paranoid about how they behaved. They were kind of fighting against their natural instincts. I mean, I always measured a new man by how far he let a woman he was very attracted to walk past him before he turned around and had another look at her from behind. And you could measure them, you know, is he a 10-yarder? Is he a 20-yarder? Uh, so it's like breaking distances. Yeah, yeah exactly. Sure. I think that all these things are actually not new men. Just, it's just old journalism. It's all, it's the same. It comes around about every 10 years or so. There's a reaction to the new man thing in Britain, which is kind of new lads type thing. Now, what is a new lad and, as well, opposed to a new man? It, there's kind of a, there's a magazine out called Loaded, which is kind of like, uh, it's, it's great to go out, call women birds again, drink lots of beer, get, get drunk and behave very insensitive and this is kind of a reaction to, to to too much of the new man thing. The lads are the reason I left England when I look back on it actually. What's a lad? The guys who like to drink beer and go to football matches and call women birds and so on. Really? Now that's the why people you that we, we export in the form of football fans mm -hmm. to go and trash Paris and Amsterdam and Berlin and so on. Right. You can go boring as baseball is as we were just pointing out with that kid with the Fagin boy. Right. You can go to a baseball <laughs> game and you can pass a ten dollar bill along the row and get your hamburger and your hot dog and your beer back with your change. She's never been to Yankee Everyone's Stadium. Everyone's This was at Yankee Stadium, my first week If you pass York. a $10 bill down at Yankee Stadium, you will get a vial of crack back. <laughs> There's a myth. Having come to America, and I always like it, because it's like, uh, I think lots of Americans don't go and actually see what it's like in Britain. And, 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 and we've got, you've got this kind of image, which is very nice for people like me, that, that we're kind of very well behaved and very nice and rather jolly and pleasant. Right. But uh, you should be it's Saturday afternoon at a football match, possibly, uh, in the wrong place. And you would uh, soon learn that then. Well, it can be, you know, but that, that's.
laddies. So that's interesting. So I think we, we agree I'm that... I'm very big with the one world philosophy. You should be in Marks and Spencer some afternoon when the new merch has just come in and trying to find a camel cashmere sweater uh, in your size. I mean, you get trampled. But it's nice. It's, uh, it's, it's not unlike... But how many people have died in a stampede in a, in a cashmere sweat? I mean, there are, I, I think with the football thing they're talking about, it is, it is true violence and, and true frightening. Cashmere sweater, certainly you might not get the size well, you want. <laughs> but I've never heard, you know, where's Betty? She died at Kmart. <laughs> she went for a blender and they trampled her. You know, it's just a, it's a different... But I, I see what you're saying. It's cyclical. It's... Let's look at one of America's favorite hobbies, shall we? Suing people. I'm Doug Llewellyn with an important question. If you're hurt in an auto or motorcycle accident, should you have a lawyer? The insurance industry's own research says you'll receive more money for your injuries faster with the help of an experienced personal injury attorney. If you've been hurt, dial 1-800-501-LAWS for a free phone consultation with a lawyer in your area. 1-800-501-LAWS. We can't undo the hurt, but we can help. How sweet. You know, the law in America is a national pastime, uh, a giant game show, really, and it's big, big business. We have a legal system that is a laughing stock. We have lawyers running the system. That's why we're out of control. I'm about to come over and kick your ass. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of Penal Code Section 187. That's the question, your answer on line 16. Oh, I'm looking at the book. No, no. Well, you Turn switched it, back please, and forwards, Ms. Callaghy. Ms. Callaghy, you're confusing me. This is the only way to make money in the States today. I think the lawyers have kind of gotten out of control with what power they can wield. It's astonishing what we've sunk to here. Uh, Dave Chappelle, are Americans using the law to protect their civil rights, or are we greedy little bastards trying to extort from the system? Well, greedy little bastards is kind of the American way, don't you think? I mean, that's how we make, I mean, people, it's all about money here. Right. It's all about getting over. And sometimes that's people's easy ticket out. I mean, if I know a friend got hit by a car, I say, you all right? Yeah. Gonna sue? That's right. A, that's always the second question. Just like people who sue uh, tobacco companies, which is legitimate, and at the same time, it's like, man, you knew. Right. <laughs> well, it's right there Smoking, on the package. Did, yeah, you know, I mean, it has a label and everything, and you knew. I, I, I think it's true. There is too much protection now for the consumer. It's gone too far. There's all consumer programs always on the television about... I think that there's much... To, I want to see a consumer program, actually, that, that shows no sympathy at all for the people writing. It's called Tough Tits, You Bought It. <laughs> Because, you know, it's gone too far. It's just as, as Dave was saying there, you're not going to pick up a packet of cigarettes It says smoking kills. You're not going to think, oh, I have one of these. This could do me some good. Oh, that one. He's Britain as a litigious society as America is. It's getting, it's getting worse than it was. There was a case recently, I think, where a boy actually had an accident with a lawnmower and he sued his father and won the case. So it'll come a point where parents... <laughs> Parents are actually going to get babies as soon as they're born to sign a little legal document saying, oh, will you promise not to sue me? Do you know why they use lawyers instead of rats now at the National Institute of Health Labs? There are three why reasons why. they use why. lawyers instead of rats? Three Thank reasons. You. One, Chris. lawyers reproduce more rapidly. <laughs> Second, um, the staff find they don't get so emotionally involved when they use a lawyer. <laughs> and third, there are some things that a rat just cannot be induced to do. <laughs> and do you what's... know what the name of the only in, only in New York, only in America... You know, this isn't make me laugh. <laughs> this isn't some game show where if this doesn't work, Gallagher's gonna come out on a unicycle with a funny hat. This is a show where we're discussing issues. Now, let's move on. Here's my point. The serious point is yes. this. Where I live in the District of Columbia, there are more lawyers, more attorneys registered in, in D.C. than in the whole of Japan. Do we envy the Japanese for the way the economy and society performs, how smoothly, how fi efficiently, how effectively? Yes, we do. We have too many lawyers available for no money, whatever. You do it on a contingency fee, mm -hmm. and you don't have to put up any money, give them a retainer. But if they win a million dollars for you, they get 922000 of that amount, and you get to keep whatever is left yeah. so there are a lot of lawyers because there's a lot of money in it and there are a lot of lawsuits because the uh the plaintiff has nothing to lose mm. really they, they're saying now okay we'll, we'll introduce a bill where 
if the person suing loses, he's got to pay the other dude's legal fees. But what if it is a legitimate claim and the guy just had a bad lawyer? Boom, I don't want to pay his damn legal fees. He beat me and I got to pay for his shit, too. <laughs> Your lawyers can become stars, like I mean, because you have you have your cases on on television. I mean, now, do they, you have TV cameras well, in, no, in your no, courtroom? No, we're not allowed to have them. They tried it in in Scotland, and the programs. They'll try anything so, in Scotland. The, the programs were so boring that nobody watched it. Because I mean, everyone is so formal in British courts. The barristers are getting up and going, "Objection, my lord." How does it matter if there's a camera in the court? Justice is justice. I mean, look, if I gotta say some shit that's real, I gotta say it. I think there's a camera here. I have some real shit to say. I think you almost said it yourself earlier. As soon as you put a TV somewhere, you don't actually get people behaving the same way. They start all this, the tricks. They start the showbiz tricks. That is what we were talking true. about the politicians earlier. You don't at the convention. You don't get people discussing policies because they're putting on a free advert. But is he, what he was talking about though is doesn't that make it more interesting at least to people? And and maybe that's the way yeah, to go. But I, I don't think who wants the law to be interesting. We just want justice. Why does it have to be interesting? Why is it entertainment? I thought of something else profound to say. Everything else in, in public in America is, as we've just been saying, extremely boring and tedious. The election is very boring. The debates are boring. The proceedings of Congress are fantastically boring. There's no question time. There's no fighting. A lot of things are very boring. There's no confrontation. Everything's compromised. I thought you liked it here. <laughs> I love it here. There's, it's all consensus and compromise and not confrontation. Where can you get confrontation? In the courtroom. And it's the only place where there's no fixing either. No one really knows what's going to happen. So it's not predictable like politics is. And blah, 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 blah. So people tune in because at last, real blood on the sand you're in the, the people's afternoon. Court? Have you seen the people's court? Very predictable. Anytime there was a young girl in a leotard, she won. People love to judge. Like OJ. Right. Not just America. The whole world was captivated. Everyone swore it was guilty, but they just had to see that brother. Now, go. I don't know about the world. I, I, I can't necessarily say that I'm in Asia, you, in I China, they were going, OJ guilty. But the one good thing about the OJ is at least a lot of Americans finally got to see their legal system at work. Was that and I think that white right? people were so shocked that it was bad that they're still angry. Well, brothers, no. If you're rich, right. you got a real good chance of walking. And that's why OJ Simpson walked. Mm -hmm. But Americans were outraged by the acquittal because no one felt like justice was served. And you know, maybe the brother's not innocent. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, so it's like, I don't know. I think people, but I think Americans are the kind of people who love to judge. That's so why Ricky Lake is rich. Why am I tells rich? Because they like to watch other people on TV going through their problems so they can say, you are f***ed up, man. <laughs> So you get basically in, in America, it's my life is terrible, my life is this, but at least I'm not that guy. Oh my yeah, God, exactly, look at that guy. Exactly, that's what it's right. all about, uh, survival of the fittest. I think Chris was on to something a few minutes ago when he said we like to watch court trials, popular movie themes, popular TV themes. We read about them in papers because you don't know how it's going to come out. Bookies bet on trials. They take wagers from their clients because it's exciting. It's like a football game. You don't know what's going to happen for sure. It's absolutely fantastic <laughs> that you, you, you kind of want to watch these things just to see because you don't know what the result's going to be. I mean, the, the fact that you might not be getting the best possible form of justice being delivered doesn't seem to be no. an issue. But where would you they rather commit no a crime calls. then? Here in America or, or in, in Britain? If you committed a crime and you were going well, to be... I've actually compiled a top ten list of countries where I want to commit crimes. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I, I, I don't know. Where, where would you, I wouldn't want to commit a cr crime here, I don't think. Because, because I don't know any lawyers here, frankly, <laughs> uh, be a disaster. Uh, uh, well, I, I would say it's a dicey proposition either way, and that you're really rolling the dice whenever you get involved in the judicial system in America. And I don't know what it's like in Britain, because I've never killed a man there. <laughs> Well, that's all the time we have uh, for tonight. I, I want to thank uh, Helen Gurley Brown for being with us, Dave Chappelle, Christopher Hitchin, and Tony Hawks. Thank you very much for joining us. And as the OJ bandwagon starts up again, here's a few souvenirs to take home with you. Good night, everybody.